The way I'm going to show you is a non-destructive way, which means you can go back and make changes, uh, further changes to your adjustments. So the first thing that you need to do is open up your photo in Photoshop. I'm using Adobe Photoshop CC 2017, but opening a photo is the same in most uh, editions of Adobe Photoshop. So all you need to do is go File, Open File, and then select it in your browser, or you can simply find your file on the computer, right click and go open with Photoshop. Once your photo is in Photoshop, just make sure auto select is on and show transform controls is selected. We're going to be using adjustment layers in order to edit our photo this way that we can go back and make changes to anything that we do. There are two ways to add an adjustment layer to your photo. You can go over here to the right hand side of your screen and there is an adjustment tab. If that isn't showing, you can go up to window and make sure adjustments is selected. You also want to make sure layers is selected. So that's these two windows on the right hand side. You can go down um, to the bottom of your layers palette and select this kind of half circle and this is your adjustment layers. And here you can see a list of different adjustment layers you can choose. The same ones are up here under the adjustments tab. So I'm going to use the adjustments tab, but you can go down to the bottom of your layers palette in order to find them. The first thing that we're going to do is adjust the levels of our image. So we're going to select the levels here, and it's going to open up this dialog box. Now, what we see here is a histogram. And this is the tonal range of the image. So it looks at all the pixels of the image and says what's uh, dark, what's bright, and what's somewhere in between. This is represented by these three different tabs here. So down the, on the left-hand side, we have the shadows tab. In the middle, we have the mid-range uh, and the mid-tones. And on the far right-hand side, we have our highlights. So shadows, mid-tones, highlights. The shadows obviously being the darkest, highlights being the brightest part of the image, and the mid-tones being somewhere in the middle of those two. Now what we want to do is we want to try and have an even kind of light distribution, and that kind of says that our image is correctly exposed, however you're going to go by what looks the best. So you need to make sure you move the shadows or the highlights first and get them to the spots you want, then move your midtones. We do this because when we move the shadows, you'll see that the midtones tab moves, and when we move the highlights, the midtones tab moves. But if we just move the midtones tab, um, the others stay the same. So we have to make sure we do that at the end. So we're going to be moving the shadows. So I'm just going to darken the shadows a bit because I think that makes the image look a bit more vibrant. And I'm only going to slightly increase the highlights because they're already quite. Um, bright, as you can see in some of these kind of really bright parts of the image. I'm then going to just slide my mid-tone slightly to the right um, until I'm happy with how it looks. You shouldn't be doing any drastic changes because that's going to make your image look edited and that's not what we're trying to do. We want to try and make our images look um, as natural as possible in the best way that we kind of can. Once you're happy with that, all you need to do is select the little arrows here and it hides that dialog box. But as I said, if you ever want to go back and change it, all you need to do is double click on that again and you can go and uh, make some adjustments because it will stay at where you have put them previously. The next thing you can do is our um, brightness and contrast. You shouldn't really need to do too much to that once you move your levels, but you can um, overall increase the contrast between the bright parts of your image and the darker parts of your image. So if I increase that, you'll see that the contrast is increased. I think slightly increased look all right, but um, the brightness of your image, I think, should remain the same as you have done it because that's kind of what our levels plays with anyway. If you ever are wondering what each of these tabs look like, you can um, just move across and you'll see that above the name changes, um, depending on kind of 
where you put your cursor. The next thing that we're going to do is go to this kind of little balance scale picture, which is our color balance. This allows you to manipulate the different colors of your image. So if I want to increase the greens in my image, I can move the green, uh, the this tab towards green, and you'll see that the green in the image increases. You will notice up the top here, it says tone and it says mid-tone. So if you think back to that histogram that we've already looked at, this is adjusting the colors of the mid-tones in your image. If you click that, you can go to highlights and now I'll be changing the highlights of the image. So all the kind of brighter spots will be go more green, which doesn't look great. So let's not do that. Um, and you can go to the shadows. So I'm going to start off with my shadows. So all these kind of dark areas in my image, I'm going to see if I increase the yellow on that. Or maybe, and then if I can increase the blue. So you'll see the difference. I think the yellow works a bit better here. And I might add a little bit of red to that. And then I'm happy with that with our shadows. For my mid-tones, I am going to increase the green because I want to try and bring that out in my image and I might just add you know, a tiny bit of blue as to make it not too green and then finally my highlights um, it is a sunny day so I might add a bit of yellow and that will kind of maybe a tiny bit of red and then I can hide it the same way as I hid the um, levels and the brightness and contrast you don't have to change each one if you're happy with it and you're happy with the way that the color looks in your image that's fine but that's just a tool that you can use if at any time you want to go back to how it was you can uh, just put zero in this field here and it'll take it back to the exact middle where the zero is and that's obviously plus 15 points to the right and uh, negative 12 is to the left I think a really important step of editing is to check where you came from to see what you've done, to see if it's better or if you think you've over edited it or anything like that. You can do that in your layers palette. So I want to just see my background image. So this little eye here says what layers we can see. So if I hide just by clicking on it, all the layers that we've edited, that's the first image we had, which initially I thought looked okay. But as I have edited, you'll see the difference. So I think what I've got at the moment looks a lot better. There are other things that you can uh, do with your adjustments. You can increase or decrease the exposure. So this is the entire exposure of the image. So if you've taken a good photo to begin with, um, hopefully you shouldn't need to adjust this uh, too much. And if your image is overexposed, um, trying to adjust it in Photoshop isn't going to do much because you don't have that much information in the pixels. Whereas when it's um, underexposed, you have a little bit more room, but try and get your image best exposed when you actually take the uh, photo. But I'll, just so you can see, if I increase the exposure, you'll see that the image is getting a lot brighter. And if I decrease it, it's getting a lot darker. So I'm just going to hit back to zero in the number there um, to leave it how it was, but just so you know that that's there. If you ever add an adjustment layer and you don't like it and you don't want it, you can click and drag it just down to the little bin at the bottom of the layers palette, let go, and then it's gone. So you don't have to worry about it um, too much. The last thing that I'm going to show you how to do is um, change your image to black and white. So this is uh, this kind of rectangle that's half black, half white. Uh, click on that. And now our image automatically goes to black and white. This is just kind of the default that Photoshop does, but you have the option to manipulate what part of the image is darker and what part of the image is lighter. So you need to think back to what your image actually looked like. And I know I have lots of greens in my image. So if I was to change this green slider here, if I increased it, you'll see all the spots where green was are kind of going lighter. If I decrease it, you'll see that they're going darker. And I think that looks a bit better because you can see a bit more depth to your image, maybe not that much yet. Um, I also know there's quite a bit of blue in my image in the sky, so I'm making the sky lighter there, or I'm making the sky darker. I think the sky needs to be a bit darker so you can still see um, the highlights and things like that. And I know that I had quite a bit of yellow tone in that, so I'm going to brighten some of those, maybe to around there. So that looks a lot better than the default is. So you have a lot of scope to manipulate things. You can see 
that even got some red there. So if I decrease that, I think that's good as well. So you want to try and have a good mix of um, black and white in your image to give it a bit more depth. <coughs> you can hide that black and white layer. So just by clicking on the eye there to see that's what it was. That's what it is now. And I think that looks pretty good. Once you're happy with that, I'm just going to get rid of this black and white layer. Um, once you're happy with how your image looks, you can go up to File and then Save As. And you'll see that it automatically wants to save as a PSD file, which is a Photoshop file. That's fine if you want to go back into your photo and keep on editing. So just say you are doing some editing and then you need to go do something else. You can uh, save it as a Photoshop file and all these layers on the right hand side and all the changes you have made are still there for you to go back and adjust. However, once you've kind of done your edit and you're really happy with it, you do want to save it as a JPEG file. Okay, so at format, you want to go down to JPEG, just by itself, not 2000 or stereo, so click on JPEG. And now, this image will be able to be viewed on any computer that doesn't have Photoshop. It can be uploaded to the internet, it can be printed out, all from that file. A Photoshop file is only going to open up in the Photoshop program. You'll see that when I've changed it to JPEG, it automatically keeps the file name and then says copy. You don't ever want to save over your original file because you want to have that original file in case you want to edit it differently in the future. So what I would suggest is either leave it as a copy or rename it for something else, which you can do, and then make sure you save it to the folder that you want. You should make sure you should always have a folder designated to your editing. Um, for this purpose, I'm just going to save it on the desktop and then I'm going to click Save. This is going to open up another dialog box and give you some options for your JPEG image. Depending on where this image is going um, will depend on the quality you choose. We're going to be printing out our images in class, so what I would suggest for you to do is to make it the maximum, and you'll see that that file size is quite big here, so it gives you a preview of how big the file size is, so if I make it a smaller file, you'll see that it makes it quite significantly smaller. But we want our image to be at the maximum quality, so when we print it out in a quite a large format, it's still going to look really good. And then keep your format, format options at baseline standard and click OK. Now your uh, file has saved, and if I go to my desktop, you'll see that the file is there as a copy and that's what it looks like now.